All right, we're back with another Dorico tutorial shorts. I've been wearing the same clothes for all of these videos. How is that possible? Okay, in the last couple videos, we took a look at uh, some Dorico tutorial shorts. Uh, if you don't know the drill, take a look at the description below. There is a timestamp of each of the topics that we're going to cover. And hopefully that's helpful for you to find the answer to a question or skim around and see what you need to learn. So these were all put together for a different series where someone was asking me specific questions and I decided to just compile these all together and share them with you. So hopefully these are helpful. If they are, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and you can also become a member and support the channel and all that we're doing here. And hey, if there's a question that you have that you're not seeing answered, be sure to put that in the comments below and I'll try and get to that as soon as I can. So here is the next set of Dorico tutorials. Let's change some layout options with this part. We don't want to see one dot Tim's project in here. Now, if we go into engrave mode, we can see that we have a frame and I use my frames tool, double click in here and we can see that there are wild cards, just like from the score. There's a few ways we could get rid of this, but this is actually part of our flow headings, and this will default onto all of our parts. One way we could change this is to select this page, right click, and insert flow heading change. You can see that it's saying use flow heading default, which is this one right here, which includes this text. Perhaps we do not want that heading. So we could select here, choose none, and then press OK, and it will remove that from our page. And here on the pages, you can see it's now highlighted yellow. This is to show that there are changes to this page. Here in our piece, we want to add a title page. So we're going to go to engrave mode. And here under our pages, we're going to select page one. We have a myriad of options down here, including this first one that is to insert pages. But we want to add it before page one. So we'll select page one and then insert page. It's now going to ask how many pages do we want to add? Where do we want to add them? And we want to add it before page one. We could say after or change to a different page, but this is where we're going to put it. We could also choose a different page template, which are these over here on the right. We would have to choose one and we would probably want to edit it first before adding it. So for right now, we're going to choose none and hit OK. We've now added a blank page to the beginning of our score. If we wanted to add some text, we could go here on the left and hit frames. And now we could select a text frame. We'll then click anywhere, drag, and we have an option to add new text here. We could double click in and perhaps I want to type in Tim's project. But what if later on I change my mind on what the name of this project is? I would then have to change this and I would also have to change the wildcard for the title from file and project info. So instead of doing this twice, I'm going to double click in here, delete what I typed, and I'm going to right click and add in the wildcard project info title. So now if I select out of this, it's automatically using the same text that is being pulled everywhere else. So you'd never have to change it more than once. Let's go ahead and double click in here again select this and let's put it in the center of the frame by using this button here 
to align to center. We are then going to make this a bit different. Over here we have a variety of text defaults. We could use the default text, or perhaps we want to make this bigger, like the title. And now if we select out of here, we can see that this is a little bit larger. In fact, this is the same size as here. We could also make it bigger manually by selecting this and then increasing the size within this menu. We could also make it bold. I'd like to add a special note to the players in this piece. So I'm going to select this measure and this note that is the first note for the viola just because I want it attached to this spot. To add text, we do Shift plus X, and now I'm going to type in my message. A special note for, and since I'm starting to run out of space, I'm going to hit Enter to get a new line, players and listeners, period. Now I'm going to escape out of this, and we can see I've got this text that's above my viola music. Let's select this, and now if you didn't have this options open, it's located at the bottom of your screen with the arrow key, and we're going to move it from position of above to below, where it's in between our viola and piano, and then because this is a special text, let's add a border to it. And we could even change the border size by turning this on and changing it from rectangle to rounded rectangle, or even capsule, or angled ends rectangle. So we have a few built-in options for automatically adding in text. Additionally, if we select this, perhaps this is too big for the page and the music, we could scale this down. Under these same options, we could hit scale and we could go from normal to some preset options like Q. And that makes it a little bit smaller. There's also grace, which is smaller and Q grace, which is even smaller. We'll talk about those more later, but for right now, I'm gonna keep this at the size of Q. At the beginning of the viola part, we're gonna add in a grace note. So we want that grace note to happen right before this first note. So let's select this note and hit enter. And then we're gonna be adding in an eighth note grace note. So we have the eighth note selected, but then we also need to select this option for grace notes. And you can see it's slightly shifted our key sign for notes. So with this highlighted blue, we'll add in another note. We added a B, and it automatically places it right behind. Dorico automatically puts grace notes as slashed. If we don't want this, all we have to do under these options is select this to make it a regular grace note. And we could escape out of this and we can see our grace note here. Perhaps we also want this to be a slide for the viola, so we could select this note, and we're gonna add a slur, and then we're also gonna add a slide. So here, let's select our note. We're gonna go here to ornaments. And under ornaments, there are a number of different options, and we're going to add a glissandi with the wavy lines. And you can see that it's added in the text for gliss. That can be adjusted in engraving options. But for now, we have a nice gliss that's a grace note for this beat. Now perhaps this note is supposed to happen before the bar line. So if we select this note, we have this option under grace notes to check this box and move it before 
the bar line. Perhaps the lyrics text is a little bit too big for this piece. So let's go ahead and change that in library and then paragraph styles. Here in paragraph styles, we have a number of different options that we can use to change text throughout the piece. This is different from finale because we don't have to change each text individually. So if we select lyrics on this left hand menu, we see that this is the font and this is the font size for our lyrics. So let's reduce this down to 10. And I'm going to move this to the side so we can see when it moves smaller when I hit OK. And that's how we can reduce or increase the size of the text font. On our piece here, we have space on our page to make these notes a little bit bigger. So let's do that. We're going to go to Library and then Layout Options. And here we have our full score selected. We're going to scroll up and we're going to change the size of our uh, space here for our notes from 7 to 7.4 size 2. Now when we hit apply that goes to all of the music within the full score and you can see it's made it a little bit bigger. So if you need to change all of the music for a part that's how you do it. Are you missing the zones or the menus from Dorico so perhaps there's nothing up here to go from setup to write to play mode? Well try hitting control plus 6 or if you need the menu on the left, control plus seven, the menu on the bottom, control plus eight, and the menu on the right, control plus nine. These are all hidden or could be hidden with a toggle. And you go up here to window and you can see and access all the different zones in Dorico that may be hiding. If we have a situation like this where we have rests from a different voice that we don't need, we can get rid of those by selecting the entire measure using our select button here or select tool and then we're going to go to edit and then remove rests and just like that it'll get rid of any extra rests so here in measure 15 we've got a piano part with uh, a couple big chords and we want to make these rolled chords so how can we do that well we're going to go ahead and just select the chord here and then over here on the right hand panel we're going to open this TR for ornaments, and we have an opportunity to put in an upward arpeggio. We could do a downward one here. All we have to do is select the chord and then input it. If we want to do all of this, we could get our selection tool. I'm going to turn off the chord tool. But once we have our selection tool, we can click and select this whole big chord with our right and left hands. And then over here and under arpeggiation, we'll just click that and we have our rolled chords. So here at the end of our piece, we want to get rid of these three extra measures. So we could select these and then go up here to edit and then delete bars. Or we could also just use the system track up here. So we could select here and this shows a little trash can. And we can delete that or we could select multiple at the same time and delete also in the system track if we wanted to add a measure perhaps we want to measure right in between here between 14 and 15 we select the system track for 14 and hit this plus here on the bubble and we get a measure right in between if we want to add more measures there's a few different things we could do perhaps we want more measures at the end of the piece so we could open up this menu here on the right, the one here with bars and bar lines, and we can insert measures. So we want some at the end of the flow, which is the end of our movement. So I'm gonna add four bars. And you can see it's added four more bars. But perhaps I wanna add more measures in between. We saw how we can use the system track, but perhaps we want a lot of measures, so we could select uh, let's say measure 16 here where we have some music and then shift plus B 
and then we add as many measures as we want. So how about plus four? And now it's added four more measures before where we were. If we want to change the length of these notes that we have selected, there's a few things we could do. We could select the insert voice button over here, and then we could select eighth note. And there we have it, we've changed our notes. We could also hit the quarter note, and it's going to change the length of our notes. Let's set it back to 16th notes, because one of the troubles with using insert voice, if we were to select this measure, these 16th notes, and select 8th note, we can see it's moved my 16th notes over by the same duration, by one beat. If I was to click quarter notes, again, it's moved it over. So you want to use this very sparingly, and when you know that you're not going to move things over on the right hand side. So let's set this to 16th notes again, and it pulls everything in. So just be aware that if you're using insert voice, it may affect the music after. At this point in our piece, we want to export an audio file. To do that, we're going to go to File, Export, and Audio. This menu gives us a lot of options, including what do we want to export. If there were multiple flows or movements, those would all be listed here. So whatever you check is what's going to be exported in the audio file. If you wanted separate files, perhaps just the piano, just the viola, and just the soprano, you could select this and it will export three different audio files. Here is where our file is going to go. You can see that for me, it's going to my E drive in a Dorico folder and a folder called tutorials. If you want to change that, just click here and now it opens up a whole new menu where you can select the folder where this will be saved to. In your audio export options, you can choose an MP3, a lossless FLAC, or a WAV file. If you're using simple music, I recommend just using an MP3, but if you are using a big piece of music with a lot of instruments and there's a lot going on, it can be helpful to have a higher resolution and use a WAV file. All you have to do then is click OK and it will go ahead and process your audio file and then that will be saved to the location that we set. Hey, so hopefully these Dorico tutorials are helpful for you. If you haven't seen the previous videos and all of those tutorials, be sure to check those out. Uh, it's a great step-by-step -step on how to put together a composition in Dorico 5. So hopefully you got something out of this video. Be sure to like it, subscribe to the channel, and you can also become a member and support the channel and everything that we're doing here. And if you have more questions, put them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.